So the process of producing 2D planes from the 3D model is definitely a different kind of process than we're used to, to have done in the past. And it uses some things that are going to seem new to us and, and you know different, but have actually been around for, for some time, even back to the, the old school microstation days. And I think it's important to kind of understand what this new workflow is doing in the background in order to be able to troubleshoot properly and you know just make sure you can adjust things on the fly if needed. So I want to go over some, some basic concepts to start with here just to kind of, again, drill home the, the fundamentals and, and that'll kind of pay off in the, in the long run here. Um, one thing that oftentimes gets confused is people think, oh, a DGN file, right, this is, uh, this is the model. But a DGN file is actually a box or you know, a container which you have different models stored inside of it. So the DGN file is, again, just like a container and you can have really an infinite number of models inside of a DGN file. Um, you could actually have you know, every single model for the entire product in one DGN file. Now that'd be a terrible idea because then if something happened to that file, then you're, you're out of luck. And that also would create some kind of you know, production choke point in that case where only one person can be there at the same time. But it is possible, right? So any number of models, whether it's design models, drawing models, or sheet models, can all reside in a DGN file. Another way to kind of think of this is like a workbook, right? Where the DGN file is like an Excel workbook and then the tabs of... Uh, the workbook are like individual models within that workbook or individual models within the DGN file. So there's three different model types here that were, um, again, nothing new, but are something that we might have used in the past. But a couple of key concepts here. So DGN file, right, this is going to be, again, like we said, a box or container of models. Uh, design model. So design models are going to be where the, the native geometry or elements are stored and where section cuts are made. So this is the traditional uh, models we've used in the past in, in 2D microstation. Those are always 2D design models we've used in the past. Now the ones we're going to be using in the current workflow are going to be 3D design models. The other type of model here that we're going to use next is a drawing model. And this is going to be used to get a 2D view of a 3D model by referencing in a saved view. And all dimensioning and annotations are stored here. So again, just a, a saved view of the design model getting referenced onto this drawing model here. And the last model type we have that we're going to be using is a sheet model. This is going to be a virtual plan sheet, you know, true size 11 by 17 and the drawing models are referenced onto a sheet model. So we're going to look at two other uh, kind of ways of explaining this, this uh, connection or this workflow here that will make a little bit more sense uh, with each page here. So the overall process is oftentimes referred to as the, the dynamic view workflow. And the dynamic view workflow, you're going to start off in some kind of a design model and you're going to use some kind of tool whether it's a section callout tool or a civil name boundary tool or something else and that's going to first create a saved view and in sometimes you know if it's it, it there's technically a step in between here like right before the saved view gets created where you're creating uh like if you're using the section callout tool it's going to create a clip volume to kind of let the program know what it is that you want to include in the save view or if it's a name boundary then it just be like a 2d boundary so the first thing actually in between here would be some kind of boundary creation whether it's a 2d boundary or a 3d clip volume but once that's created it's going to go ahead and create a save view and again this is kind of all automated here with with these tools like the section callout tool the section call tool section callout tool automatically creates that clip volume and that automatically creates a save view and then that save view gets referenced onto a drawing model. Now the drawing model is a one-to-one -one full scale. So if you measure the, the 2D you know, geometry in the drawing model, it should be one-to-one -one full scale. Annotation scale is going to be whatever is needed. And you don't really know what the annotation scale is uh, that you're going to need in the drawing model until you place the drawing model onto a sheet model and see what you have to you know, scale that design, the drawing model down to to fit on the sheet model the way you want it to fit. And then once you know that scale, then you'd use the same annotation scale here in this drawing model. 
But the only thing that's on here is basically a reference of the save view. And this is where we're going to place our annotations and callouts and, and dimensions. You know, so things like, actually, let's open up a plan set here. So things like all these dimensions here, these elevation callouts, you know, baseline construction flyover, the center line of the pier, um, all this kind of stuff around here. Like anything that's particular to this certain view, you know, is what's going to be placed on this particular drawing model. So then once you're done placing you know, your annotations and your dimensions and all this stuff on the drawing model, which by the way, I would wait until after you know what scale that drawing model is gonna be need to brought in uh, to the uh, sheet model here. Like once you bring that drawing model into the sheet model and you scale it down, you'll probably adjust it maybe once or twice to get the, the size you want of the sheet model. And then I would come back in and start doing your annotations in the drawing model afterwards. Right, you want to know what annotation scale you need before placing those annotations because that's going to change the position of the annotations in the drawing model. So once you reference that drawing model onto a sheet model, figure out what the scale is, you go back here, you do all your annotations, uh, and then you kind of go back to the, the sheet model and, and adjust as needed. And, and how that drawing model gets placed onto the sheet model, again, it's just a reference onto the sheet model. All right, the uh, reference of the drawing model, you're going to scale that as needed to whatever you need because it's going to be basically any of the drawing models or any of the, the content that gets put on the sheet models gets scaled down. That's how it works now. It's not scaling a border up. It's going to be scaling the, the content down that needs to go onto a you know 11 by 17 virtual sheet of paper. Uh, annotation scale of the sheet model itself should always be one to one. And we can place some callouts and annotations here on the sheet model that aren't specific to a view. So what do I mean by that? You know, if we have things like notes like this here, right, these cross-reference notes, you know, these are kind of general notes for uh, the entire sheet here. This you could place on the sheet model itself. You don't need to put this into a drawing model. Um, so basically all the annotation that's relative to this view, that belongs in the drawing model for this view. But anything else, like this kind of stuff here, you know, you can put this on the, the sheet model itself. And then one other way to kind of look at it, uh, is another little workflow we put together here. Again, blue's the DGN, black's the design model, gray's the drawing model, white's the sheet model. And that's generally the how you know, the background colors are of the different model types by default. I typically change that sheet model to a black background because it's easier to see the line work and it's just easier on the eyes and we can show you how to do that uh, later on here. But uh, in general here, we're gonna be always starting off with our, our master 3D bridge model here. And, you know, depending on how we're going to do this like depending on the the type of job if there's multiple bridges that we're going to want to reference into uh, our plans for a specific bridge um, in that kind of case then what we might want to do is have all of our individual bridge models and then just reference those into an empty kind of what they call a composition model here and then you know use that composition model for all of our uh, our plans production but if it's maybe just like a single bridge, then we can kind of treat that, that bridge model, the single bridge, as the master uh, kind of reference model here. But either way, we'll just call it you know, a master you know, DGN file of some kind, where we have a design model in there, a 3D design model uh, that contains our bridge and anything else we want to basically reference onto our plans. And then say I want to create a typical section sheet. So, First one we're gonna look at is something like this, right? It's a normal typical section sheet. I would create a typical section DGN separate file. I would reference in that master 3D bridge model into a 3D design model here. And then I would go ahead and start using some tools like the section callout or new boundary. Um, in this case here, what I'll use is a uh, typically a um, either a section callout tool 
or a dynamic view by station tool. That dynamic view by station tool is probably the best one for, for the typical section in this case here. But either way, I'm going to use one of those tools to create a saved view that gets referenced onto this drawing model here. And then I'm going to do any annotations and dimensioning on this drawing model. And then I'm going to reference that onto a sheet model here. Another workflow would be one that we're going to create our maybe our footing detail sheet here. Three separate views on a single sheet model. So for this one, I would create a, a footing details DGN file. And then in that DGN file, I'm going to have a 3D design model where I reference in my master bridge model. Although we do, we will talk about another workflow for substructure. Uh, it's a little bit different than this, but the overall philosophy is still the same. Um, but in this case here, we're just referencing the 3D master model. We're going to use section callouts tools to create the footing plan, the footing elevation, and this other view here, this third view, this footing column bar section view. So basically using the section callout tool three times to create three different drawing models. We're annotating and dimensioning on each individual drawing model and then referencing all three of these drawing models onto the sheet model here. So I have a total of you know, five models that live inside of this DGN file in this case. And then the last workflow would be for creating maybe something like this peer sheet here where we have you know multiple views but we also want to do you know call like section cuts on one of the views so that's a little bit different there and we can do that we can do section callouts on a 2d view to produce you know sections in the in the other dimension so like just like before right we're going to have a peer you know, peer dgn file we're going to reference in the master model here into a 3d design model we're going to use a section callout tool to create the front elevation drawing model and then we'll dimension that front elevation calling model as needed and then we'll also do some section cuts on this front elevation drawing model this 2d drawing model we'll do a section cut to get maybe column section one column section two another section cut to get maybe the cap section cut and then another one to get you near know, the pier side elevation and then we'll annotate and dimension on any of these ones and then all five of those models would individually get referenced into the single sheet file here, the single sheet model. So in this case, we have what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total models in this one DGN file here.